So now we're going to use a tool called Packet Tracer and what we're going to do is we're going to set up a very simple network using some Cisco command line just so you can kind of get a feel for everything we've done thus far. So let's go ahead. I've got Google open over here. All I want to do is just type in Packet Tracer. So what we're looking for is the NetACAD download here, the first link. And you're going to need to enroll to download Packet Tracer. So you'll have to sign up. It's free. Uh, once you sign up, you will get um, some free courses through Cisco, which is pretty cool. Uh, but you'll also be able to download Packet Tracer. So go ahead and do the sign up. And once you sign up, you'll be provided a link to download Packet Tracer. Download it, install it with default uh, everything, and then go ahead and open it up. So once you got it opened, go ahead and um, I would suggest pausing the video. Once you got it all set up, then come back, unpause the video, and we'll move on. Okay, so moving on, I'm going to go ahead and open Packet Tracer on my end. Okay, so when we look at Packet Tracer, you can see down here that we have our devices. So here's our network devices. We've got end devices, components, wiring, or connections. Um, and what we can do is if we're sitting in network devices, the first thing it gives us is routers, then it has switches, hubs, uh, wireless devices. So pretty much everything we've talked about here, security, so those would be your firewalls, and then they've got WAN emulation. So what we can do here is we can pick a specific um, router if we wanted to, but we can just go ahead and just use generic. So I'll just grab this first generic one right here and we'll drag this guy out. And this is going to act as if it's our home router. So every router needs what? This is layer three. So every router is also going to need some switching, right? If we're going to put some devices on it. So what we can do is just grab a generic switch here and we'll put this in right here. And lastly, what I want to do is I want to take some end devices and we'll take a laptop, put that in here, and maybe we have a computer as well. So the nice thing that we have is when you double click on these, say this laptop, you can configure it with how you want it to get some settings, right? So one of the settings that we're going to do today is we're going to set up DHCP. Remember DHCP is where we assign addresses um, through the router automatically where we could set a static IP address here and use that to talk But what's the fun in that we're gonna set up DHCP and see how it works So there's that we also have this desktop feature here where we can get into a command prompt uh, Very nice to do some setup here. So it acts almost as if it's a Windows machine and uh, If you take a look here, let's just say we do an IP config We have all zeros right now because we have no IP address so we'll go ahead and get that set up here in a second. So if we're thinking about this as a home network, we got to think, okay, well, the switch is running on MAC addresses, right? So we don't need to assign anything there per se, but what we need to do is we need to assign something maybe here. So if let's come into the router first. We need to do some things on the router. Um, we need to configure, if we click on CLI over here, we need to configure a few different things. We need to give it an IP address and we need to uh, set up DHCP. So we're in this router here and you see that it just has this little uh, greater than symbol. So we're just in a basic mode right now. What we're gonna need to do is type in EN, which stands for enable. You can hit tab or you can just type in EN here and it'll work as well. So now you got this little pound sign or the hashtag and this tells you you're in your terminal right here. So there's different types of configuration modes and we're gonna, they have different names, um, but we're not gonna get into that because you don't need to know and memorize all this. Um, but from here, we can do a bunch of different show commands. So one show command we can type is show IP interface and you don't have to type this out. You can tab it again. You don't have to type the full word. Um, show IP interface brief. I'm just showing you that. You can also, I could say show IP interface brief like this. It'll also work. So you can write shorthand when you're using Cisco command line. 
So if we look at this IP interface brief, we see that we have some fast Ethernet ports. We've got two of them here. We've got some serial ports. And then we've actually got some more fast Ethernet ports down here. So what we can do is take one of these fast Ethernet ports, assign it an IP address where you see it says assigned or unassigned here, and then we'll take it online. You can see it's administratively down right now. It's down down. So we're going to have to bring that online. So let's do that first. So what we need to do is we need to get into configuration mode, which is configure terminal. You could also just type in conf t, c-o-n-f space t. That'll work. Okay, so now we're in the configuration. So we need to select an interface that we want to modify. And this interface we're going to modify is this fast Ethernet 0 slash 0. So we'll say interface FA. You can hit tab, see that it types out fast Ethernet 0 slash 0. Okay, now you see that we're in this interface. And all we have to do here is assign it an IP address. We say IP address. Well, let's just give it 192.168.0.1 and we have to give it a subnet mass too. So we'll give it a WAC24 address. Hit enter. Okay. And the last command we need to do is we need to turn this port on. Um, and I can show you what that looks like before we do it. So if you try to do, if you try to see your interface brief here, right now it'll tell you you can't. So you say show IP interface brief. It'll say it's undetected because you're not supposed to be running these show commands when you're doing configurations. But we could type a command in that says do. So we'll say do show IP interface brief and it'll tell us. So now you can see that I have an IP address here for this fast Ethernet 00, but we're still administratively down. So to bring down a port, you would type shutdown. To bring up a port, you would actually just type in no shutdown or no shut. So we hit enter there. You can see the status has changed to up. Okay. Hit enter there. We could type in exit. This will bring us back. Type in exit one more time. Okay. And we could type in WR to write our changes. Just type in it's right. So WR stands for right. So now our changes are saved. Um, so what we can do here now is we could connect the switch and the router but it's still not going to give out an IP address. They could talk. In theory, we can set statics now and we can talk up here, but unless we set up DHCP, it's not going to work. So let's go ahead and set up DHCP. Now I'm going to admit that this is a little advanced. This is a little out of scope, but I kind of want you to see the process of DHCP and just kind of see what it's doing for you. We, um, a lot of times just have everything done for us and we take it for granted. But when you have a, a Cisco background a little bit, you get to see everything done by hand. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll get back into the configuration terminal and we're going to say service DHCP. And then we have to give DHCP a pool. So we'll just name it. We'll call it main. And this is where we can get into our configuration once we've named the pool. So let's go ahead and define what our network is going to be. Well, our network's going to be 192.168.1.0, and we'll do 255s across the board. And this is where subnetting becomes important. So if we only wanted a few hosts, maybe we would change this from a WAC24 to a WAC30, for example. So we'll just give it a basic standard WAC24. Hit enter. We're going to have to define the default router. So what's our router going to be? Well, this is our router, and we assigned the IP address at uh, 0.1 and I noticed that I made a typo here so what we'll do is I'll go back so if we give this 0.1 and I will say no network 192.168.1.0 and we can tab up again I apologize I made the other one 0 so we'll call this 0.0, .0. okay so we have network 192.168.0.0. We have our default router set. And let's go ahead and set the DNS server while we're at it. We can just call that also 192.168.0.1. It can be our router, can be doing DNS as well. And we could type in exit. 
And then something we can do here as well, we can exclude an IP address from DHCP. So let's IP DHCP, we'll say excluded address. And we will say we want to exclude 192.168.0.1. We don't want to assign this because this is our router. Okay, so now we have this configured. We can type in exit. We can type in WR for write, save our changes here. And now we're ready to start attaching some interfaces. So what we can do is we can take this magic little cable over here and it'll pick out the cable type for you. So you just click on that and you touch it there, touch it there. It'll start uh, linking over here. And you can do the same for your laptop to your switch and from your PC to your switch. Okay, so we've got green lights, but we've got orange lights in here. So we're not talking over, looks like fast ethernet. You can see that we're up and it says fast ethernet, but we're not actually getting an IP address yet. So let's turn these guys green as well. If we look in here, let's type in, remember that we set a, no static IP, we just have it blank. So our IP is nothing. What we can do is we can hit DHCP and DHCP here and this should start generating. So let's go into, I don't know why it's in there. Okay, let's try this. Let's try IP config again. Okay, and it's giving us this APIPA address. So let's see what we've done wrong. So if we go into here, Let's do something called a show run. We're going to look at our configuration and see if I made a typo somewhere. Okay, so here's our IP DHCP excluded address. We've got our IP DHCP pool. So we've got the default router. We've got the DNS server. And then we've got the network range here. Let's hit space. Space again. Okay, we've got the IP address here. It's up. And if we keep looking through here, I think everything looks fine. So let me go ahead and what I'll do is I'll bring that up and down one more time. So we'll say internet fast ethernet zero slash zero or interface fast ethernet zero slash zero. We'll say shut, it'll bring it down, no shut, bring it back up. And that should take a second here. Okay, and now it's come back up. So let's type in our router here and see if we have any bindings. IP DHCP bindings. Oh, we're still in configure. Hold on, exit. Let's see if this works. And we'll exit one more time. Okay, well, sometimes this does not work depending on the configuration here. So this simulates an iOS command line interface, but it doesn't always have the right, uh, the right commands here. So let's go back, let's go to this PC and let's see now if it works. There, okay, it picked it up now. We can see that generated and we don't have any IPv6. So let's close that one. And now it's generated here too. So let's go back and see the command prompt one more time. It looks like it taking it down might have done it. Some sometimes if it's not working, you do a shut, no shut. Sometimes it's finicky. So um, this is good experience for you to see me struggle a little bit, even setting these up. And I have experience setting these up. So you could see here this address type, this 169 is actually called a PIPA. And what that is, it's like a local address if you're getting DHCP, but you're not able to talk out. So this is a 169 address identifies that. Um, but now you can see we are talking out and we're getting a 192.168.0.2 with the gateway here of 0 0.1 and then 255s across the board. Okay, and then if we come over here, let's see what IP address it gave us. And this gave us 0 0.3. So there's a lot more configuration we can do. We can go into the router, we can set DHCP lease times, we can say, 
you know, I want this to be good for a day or be good for an hour, etc. Um, but this is just the basic common gist of what your home router typically does. Typically, your home router is doing the switching for you and it's doing DHCP for you as well as wireless capability. So it's almost like a three in one. Um, but when you break it down by layer, you have your layer two, you go up to your layer three, cause this does no routing here. This only works on Mac addresses on the switch. So switch is saying, Hey, I can move packets, um, in between here, or I should say frames. These are frames. So it can move frames in between these computers based on Mac address, but the IP packets are done by the router and the router would go out if we were to continue on here. So this is the edge of our network is what we'd call this. And if you were to have another router, you could say this is the edge of your ISP's network and they would connect to each other and they would talk based on the settings that your ISP gives this router. So your ISP might say, Hey, let me tell you what the public address for this router is going to be. And it's going to be 72, 13, 35, 70. Right. And it'll give you that IP address and your router, this router could actually be doing DHCP for, the, for this router. Cause you're not paying for a static. If you're paying for a static, you're paying a lot of money. And usually that's only businesses that do that. Um, so they're doing some sort of DHCP as well, where if you don't check in, you'll lose your IP address too. So they're routing here. And if you're configuring a router on this side, you would need to configure some sort of routing protocol. Likely here, this is running on BGP um, and you can have internal routing and external routing and that's way out of scope here. Um, but it's just something to think about when you think about, you know, the little cloud sometimes they put over for your ISP Well, your ISP has a router that's sitting on the edge as well. And you're talking to them via that router. So it is router to router, goes down to a switch and then talks down into laptops or your computer, your cell phone, whatever you want your devices to be. So that's really it for this lesson. All I wanted to do was show you a basic, basic network setup. I, I didn't want you to necessarily learn a ton of Cisco command line, but I wanted you to see some basic commands. Um, you saw show IP interface brief. That's one of the biggest commands you can look at because that'll tell you all the interfaces that you have, whether they're up or down, what IP addresses are assigned to them, etc. cetera. Uh, show run is the other show command that is uh, good to have in your arsenal because you saw we used it. I wanted to make sure I didn't make a typo, which I didn't. So that kind of fixed my troubleshooting a little bit. And I ended up just going and taking the port down and bringing it back up. So, um, those are two very, very good commands to know. Another one is using enable and then configure terminal to get into the configuration terminal. Uh, setting an IP address is very basic Cisco test one level. Um, so some of these are, some of these are pretty low level. And then some of them that I showed you like the assigning a DHCP, I don't think you'll see that unless you're taking your CCNA, uh, the second part of your CCNA exam. So a little out of scope, but it applies some of the concepts that we've learned. So you saw DHCP in action. You saw me assign a DNS server and we got to talk more and more about the OSI layers. So using all this information now, you should be pretty comfortable with common network protocols, how IPv4 and IPv6 differ, what a MAC address is, and somewhat of the OSI model, you know, at least layers one through four, hopefully all the layers now, and you should be pretty comfortable with subnetting. So that's it for this lesson. I appreciate you taking the time and building a network with me. And if you like the video, please do subscribe, please share with a friend, and please keep watching. Thank you so much.